We're back with Attorney General Gary King, and we're talking about a variety of issues there. We're going to try to close it out by a couple of other things there. Um, Health care is the Affordable uh, Care Act. Uh, gets uh, mandated next, uh, next year, 2014. Um, I had an email question they wanted me to ask mm -hmm. you regarding the access of health care. When you're talking about UNMH, um, someone goes in there, uh, it's tax, you know, it, it doesn't have any insurance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. takes them six to, eight, six to 14 hours to get a bed there. Yes. Uh, versus someone who goes to a different hospital like Presbyterian, they're in and out within a mm -hmm. couple of hours or even less. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the one hand, you're looking at insurance uh, provided uh, care, and one uh, on the other hand, there's no uh, insurance uh, and the individuals, almost like a third world care kind of mm -hmm. a uh, system there. So what are your thoughts on that? They want me to ask you that question. It sure. was an email question that wanted me to Well, ask. and uh, one of the big problems that, that we have faced in this country, and I think that we hope that the Affordable Health Care Act will help to deal with this, is that so many people in this country are using emergency rooms as their primary care because they don't have health insurance. Uh, we don't provide preventative care uh, to any great extent in, in the programs that we have now. And so people wait until they get really sick and then they end up in an emergency room. And if they don't have private insurance, they, they go to UNM Hospital. Uh, frankly, I, I actually uh, was taken there after an accident I had a number of years ago and got good care there. So I, I think that the care that people get at, at UNM Hospital is good and high quality. Uh, the, the people there are doing a good job for that. But the wait for care is a huge problem. And, and I know that across the country, you know, the, the average uh, wait in waiting rooms for emergency care was like eight hours, and it's like you said at, at UNM Hospital because they deal with the indigent populations sure. as well as the trauma cases with that no are brought insurance, into yeah. them. Uh, because they do, they're the they're our uh, primary trauma care center too. So if there's right. a bad car accident or whatever, you know, a lot of times they go to UNM Hospital. So a, a lot of that I think has to do with how we how we manage uh, the provision of our health care, and so. Um, you know, we the the attorney general's office primarily in healthcare. But we deal with with Medicaid fraud. That's that's our big healthcare issue. Uh, but of course, there again, we want to make sure that, that that people that do deserve care under Medicaid are getting the care that they deserve, and that people that are trying to defraud the system, you know, aren't aren't successful at defrauding the system. So, um, I I think that it's that it's appropriate that we're focusing on on the emergency care system. I think mm -hmm. that that we need to develop a system. Uh, maybe visiting nurses even. I looked at a program in, in England a number of years ago and I think there's some discussion of this now where, where we have nurses in communities um, that are there to um, to know the families and to kind of triage and see what's going on and make sure that people if they need vaccinations are getting vaccinations and such and, and people that have urgent needs or, or emergency needs then they get directed to the emergency care so uh, if we could keep the emergency cases going to emergency and, and the non-emergency cases if we had a better system for dealing with those I, I think it would help us a, a lot there and, and I, I think that under the Affordable Care Act, you know, pretty soon everybody is supposed to have insurance. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and so... They're talking about the expansion yeah. of Medicare. Yes. Uh, Medicaid. So mm -hmm. do you think that uh, once it's uh, mandated, once it goes in effect mm -hmm. next, uh, next year, yes. uh, do you think where uh, the cost is going to come down eventually? Do you, so you, you are going to see an expansion mm -hmm. of... Uh, or we're going to see an expansion of Medicare? Well, I think Medicaid. that the way, I think we still have to do some other planning to, to bring the cost down. I think that we need to bring people from the medical care community mm -hmm. in to, to be part of that discussion. I, you know, anytime you have uh, government officials and bean counters that are making mm -hmm. health care decisions, I don't think that that's a good idea. I think people deserve to have their own doctor to help participate with them to make their health care decisions. But a lot of times they don't have the options that need to be available to them. So. Uh, and, and frankly, we just don't have enough doctors and nurses in New Mexico either. I mean, I think that we could develop programs that would encourage uh, medical professionals to work more in the rural areas. I, I know that there's an issue of trying to build a hospital in Valencia County right, right now, yeah. and people are working on that. I mean, th there, are, there are so many moving parts in the system that, that we need to do a much better job of policy making in, in dealing with health care. So once again, so that the emergency cases are treated as emergencies, but that we have a lot more preventive care so that people you know, get, get treated for preventable illnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, 
whooping cough is an issue that, that I'm aware of. A lot of people have stopped getting vaccinations for whooping cough, and now we have these uh, you know, small epidemics of whooping cough, including in New Mexico, in areas where people aren't getting vaccinations. So it's much more expensive to treat whooping cough than it is to get the right vaccinations and, and have the preventive care to keep that. From are, are you aware of the, uh, I think uh, there's four or five companies that went on the exchange. Mm -hmm. Do you know how that's going to affect, uh, do you, would you, would your office have anything to do with the exchange or? What we had to do with the exchange is that the original program that the, that the governor had developed mm -hmm. uh, to do the exchange didn't, didn't comply with the federal law and so we did an, an attorney general's opinion that basically said this doesn't comply with the federal law. We, we worked with the governor and the legislature to get a system that's compliant. So we're a little behind the curve because we should have had a system that was compliant two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that and, and there was a bill for that that we supported uh, that got vetoed by the governor. So now we're a year behind. But um, but I think that the, so the federal yeah. government gave us a mandate or a criteria on exactly how we need to yeah. fo form this exchange. They right? do, although and interesting enough, if states don't have their own exchanges, then there's a federal exchange. So we were at the brink of having a system where where everybody would have to go through the federal exchange, and and some people thought that might not be so bad because you know there'll be a lot of expertise in the federal exchange. But mm -hmm. I believe that a state like New Mexico that we should have our own system because you know we have a small population and and we want to have people to have access with that and not be competing with everybody around the country. So if the exchange works well, it should be a, a great opportunity for people to go in and, and be able to get on the web and compare different plans that are available to them and, and then choose one. And, and my understanding is it's supposed to even make it easier to purchase those plans online. But I, there's, there's plenty of work that needs to be done yet. So it's to get most, more or less going to be online? Uh, it'll be mostly online, okay. um, you know, and I think in New Mexico, even in rural areas, people have access to computers at their public libraries and such, and mm -hmm. so, you know, it used to be we worried about, okay, well, do, you know, do people of, of small means have access to the Internet and such, but, uh, and so back to our economic issue, we need to make sure that, that all of our young people have access to the Internet for learning, for instance, and, and we need to make sure that people who need health care have access. So, you know, developing good internet access around the state is going to be very important, too. So, yeah, because the economy and healthcare are related. You know, oh, absolutely. I, I think a lot of yeah. individuals don't yeah. realize how they're yeah. inter interconnected, yeah. how essential it is for us to have healthcare for everyone. Because absolutely. it's actually, yeah. you know, bankrupting our yeah. nation prior to the affordable care. It's, if know? people don't, if people aren't aware of, of good healthcare, practices, it's a drain on the economy because, you know, once again, that the emergency care is, is the most expensive, you know, the, the end of life care, the, you know, those kinds of things. And so we need to have options for people so that they can stay in their homes as long as they can stay in their homes before they have to go into some sort of institutional setting. It's less expensive. People prefer to be in their homes. You know, I mean, all of those kind of policy things are going to be important, I think, for, for us as we go into the next ten years in New Mexico to be considering those policy issues. Exactly. We're out of time, unfortunately. We'll have you back next, uh, hopefully in the next few months, maybe next year we'll have you back for uh, a little more Good. time. I really appreciate you coming back. Okay. I look forward I to it. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you appreciate very much. It. That was Gary King and Attorney General Gary King, and we'll have him back next, hopefully next year. And um, we're out of time. We'll see you next time.